Hey everyone and welcome back to The Plant Tree. I'm Dr. Jared and today we're going to be tackling the fun task of planting peas and going ahead and putting on our pea trellis for the spring. So today what we're going to do is be putting this in in two beds out here in the sprout garden. We're going to show you the how-to about how we go about that. So where we start is we like to go ahead and put our T-posts in the ground, hammering them in the ground. And so again, safety first, I always like to wear gl uh, gloves, wear glasses, and then of course, uh, some of you who may be a little bit more sensitive to loud bangs, earplugs can also come in very handy as well too. So put these in, and then we'll drive the post in. So now that I've driven my posts in, I uh, usually I try to go to about the height of the pea netting that we have. And we'll check that in just a second to make sure that we're at the right height. But the first posts that I put are the ones that are going to be on the end caps of the beds. That way it allows me to draw a nice straight line right down the bed so I can very easily figure out where the next post should go in. So now what I'm doing is I'm putting in the second post that's at the end cap of where we're going to be establishing our pea trellis. And I always like to do the end post first because it allows me to make a nice straight line across the bed for us putting the rest of the post in. The other thing too that I'll point out is I always like for the notches on the T-post to be on the same side. So as you're setting this up, try to make sure that they're always oriented the same direction. It's going to help us out a little bit later when we actually get ready to put the netting up. So out here in the sprout garden, we really like for things to be precise. So what we're going to do is we're going to run a tape measure from this impost to that impost over there. What that's going to allow us to do is it's going to allow us to space out these T-posts uh, at a certain distance apart so that they're pretty equidistant. And that's going to allow us to support our netting as we build this trellis. So Sarah's going to take this and walk it over to the other side, wouldn't it? So now we've laid our tape measure out. Now what we're going to do is we're going to come along and we're going to put posts about every five feet out here. Um, usually I find about five to seven feet is good. Another thing too that you can do is that you can measure the spacing on the netting. So if your netting is five inch blocks, you can do them every five feet and get pretty equidistant uh, ability to pull on that netting. If you've got every seven, if you've got seven inch blocks on your netting, you can pull it about seven feet apart. And then that way you'll have, again, adequate spacing to really hold that netting in place. So one of the things that's important for our T-posts is get them all roughly the same height. So if you look down this line, you'll see that all of them are pretty much level right over each other. So that's going to allow us to put up our support line with our electrical conduit so that we can get this thing good and taut. All right, now we have all of our T-posts in place. So the next step is actually go ahead and planting our peas. Now there's two different approaches to this. We can plant the peas and then put our netting up, or we can put our netting up and go ahead and plant the peas. Personally, I prefer to do it all in one day, and I prefer to do the peas first and then the netting. And the reason why is because it's easier to go down a line and to drag a hoe or this tool that you see here. This is a zipper. You use it to first open up a furrow and then you turn it over to close a furrow. This is a great tool invented by Connor Crickmore at Never Sink Farm. And so we like to use this. You could just as easily use a hoe as well too to go ahead and establish those. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a furrow for my peas. And I'm just going to pull it through our well-prepared beds that we have here. Now that we have made our furrow, it's time to go in and plant our peas. I really love planting peas because they're super easy to plant. You've got some really big seeds as well too. So this is a great seed to plant with beginning gardeners because it's really easy for them to touch these large seed. And then of course you can talk about wrinkle versus smooth. So it's kind of an interesting genetics lesson as well too. The variety that I'm planting today is PLS 141. 
That's not a very attractive name, but actually this is one of the best peas that we've had grow here in the Sprout Garden in East Texas. And so I actually love growing this one at my house. I do both January plantings, February plantings for spring crop, and then I turn right around and plant it in early September for a fall crop. And we picked about four pickings of this pea off at my house this past fall. So it's a really great performer for us to grow here. Gets tall and grows great along the trellis that we're establishing. So Sarah's going to be helping me plant some of these peas today. When I go to plant my peas, uh, you know, again, you're typically planting seeds about two to three times their width. So since peas are a little bit wider, it's okay if we go somewhere around three quarters to an inch deep on them. They're going to germinate and come up really well. So what I do to plant my peas, I just come in and I actually sow them a little thick. It's okay to sow a narrow band of peas down through here and do about maybe 12 seeds per square foot or so. Uh, you can kind of space them out. And then I won't come through and thin these later on or anything. I'll just plant them out like you see here. Sometimes people will even do two bands on either side of the trellis to come in and plant these peas. All right, now that we've planted our seeds, we can come back in and use our zipper. What we do is we turn our zipper over and then we just pull it down the row and what it does is it basically zips the soil back in and fills up that furrow. Now that we have planted our peas, we're next going to start working on putting our uh, trellis netting up. And so when we bought this a few years ago, we made the decision that we didn't want to be constantly throwing away plastic trellising. So we brought some really nice high quality nylon trellising that's lasted us several seasons. So again, we just make sure we take really good care of this. When we go to put it up, we actually like to roll it around a stick or a piece of PVC or something. That way, whenever we get ready to pull it out and just roll it back out, it comes apart very, very quickly. This stuff can easily get tangled because you basically got a whole bunch of squares uh, not, uh, tied together with string, and so they can get woven in here very easily. So again, I like to roll it up on something. That kind of helps me sort it out once we get ready to put it up in the spring. Now, it was actually a student um, a couple years ago who helped us figure this out, but whenever you get ready to put the trellis on the ends, uh, what we've gone ahead and done is we've actually, uh, in one hand, and I'm going to kind of pull this up a little bit here for you all to see it. Uh, what I do whenever I'm getting ready to put this on is I grab the top of the trellis with one hand, I grab the square underneath, the bottom of the square underneath with another hand, and then I basically just weave this going down. And then what I do is I put it up over the trellis, and once we do that, as this thing begins to fall down, you'll see that it falls down very, very neatly and we're able to uh, get the trellis to come on out and fall down gently. Let me see, I don't think I have the top. There it is, there it is. So we're just gonna kind of feed it on down. Put this back up on top. There we go. So feed it on down here to get it on down. Sometimes, too, you got to watch to make sure that other pieces of post aren't holding it up too high so that you can go ahead and get it on there and establish. You're looking good down here, Sarah, on your end, how you've got it set up. Looks good. Pull it down a little bit more, some more. There we go. Great. That looks good. And that's all there is to getting it set up. Again, just I encourage you, be patient with getting this thing on because sometimes you may have a top or something that doesn't line up totally perfect. But as you can see, Sarah and I have done this short section here within about a minute. So now that we've got our netting on, it's a really good check for us to come along and see, do we actually have the right height of the top of the T post? So as you can see here, it's still a couple inches up off the ground. I'll actually like it to be a little bit closer. So these notches again on this T-post on the back side help me figure out my depth. So I probably need to go one more notch in the ground on each one of these posts. So I can very easily do that just by unweaving the top of the trellis a little bit, hammering down a couple of times with the T-post driver, and then it should be at the right height. Another thing too is if you're worried about it coming up, you can always use landscape pins to pin this in the ground and hold it down while your crop's getting established.
now that we've checked our height and made sure that the netting is touching the ground, what we're actually going to do now is not only weave it on the, make sure it's weaved on the end post, but also come back and make sure it's weaved down these middle posts as well too. So again, the trick that I showed you earlier of grabbing the top and the bottom and the top and the bottom and weaving it until you make a nice square, then you can just put it down right over top of that T-post. All right, I think, yeah, we're there, Sarah. Yeah, that's beautiful, that's great. So the next part that we're going to do here is to now put a uh, electrical conduit pipe along the top to again help to provide some top support for this P trellis. And I credit this idea to Connor Crickmore who watching his videos online saw him do this. So what we have here is one and a half to one quarter inch PVC T's. And so what we do is we come along and we put it on top of every T post here that we have. So Sarah's already done those two down there. I've got these two here done and ready to go. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to come along with our electrical conduit and we're going to thread it through this PVC while simultaneously threading it through the netting. And while I've done this by myself, I can tell you right now, it's super handy to have an extra pair of hands like Sarah's providing me with this afternoon. So I thread it all the way down until I get to the end where it's about to come through the PVC. All right, we're there. Great. Now that we have both of our pieces of electrical conduit here, what we want to do is join them with this little joiner piece of electrical conduit. And so uh, you can put it on before and bring it all the way through. However, you'll have to watch because these screws get caught really easily in this netting. And so you want to make sure that as you're putting this on, uh, I prefer to first put it through and then do these screws as we finish up a piece of electrical conduit. So again, I just screw this in to attach these two pieces together. That way they are good and tight and it will hold the top of this netting up. And so I'll make sure that other piece of electrical conduit is in there really good. And I will then screw it on. And that's it. Now we have a well-established, very sturdy trellis for our peas to grow up once they germinate. Again, I really like to get this trellis up as soon as possible. Uh, usually I do it right after I plant my peas because I want to make sure that they have, the minute they germinate, something ready to cling to. Again, I've struggled to grow peas in the past because I haven't been able to find a good, cheap, inexpensive, fast, efficient way to put up a trellis. But man, I love this approach of, again, using T-posts, some electrical conduit, threaded through some PVC. And if you're not too keen on the colors, remember, you can always come in and paint it. Um, maybe a dark green color. Maybe you've got a favorite school color that you could paint it as well, too. But uh, I cannot wait until these peas germinate and we'll have some sweet peas ready for picking here in about two, two and a half months. Uh, so come see us here in the plantary. Uh, we hope to have a lot of fresh produce as well as plants that students have grown. And uh, we can't wait until next time. So until then, keep growing.